We've had this now for long enough to give a good few years worth of averages for a yearly consumption to compare this against the gas central heating boiler it replaced. So I've got three years worth of gas central heating data from our bills, average that out so we've got an average yearly consumption, same for this now, and now we can do a direct comparison in terms of running costs for this versus the gas central heating boiler that it replaced. Now just to be clear, this house, five bedroom house, always occupied so it's going to be higher than the UK average and the insulation on this is exactly the same now as it was when we had the gas central heating boiler. You do not need to hyper insulate your house for a heat pump but in terms of the comparison and running costs it's exactly as it was, nothing has changed. Now I'm going to be giving you two figures on this one. One for this house, which has solar panels and a home battery system. And one for if we didn't have those. So it was just a literal straight swap between the boiler and this, and then see if it would make sense without the panels, without the home battery system. Well, to do this, of course, we're gonna to need to go somewhere a little bit holier, somewhere a bit more whiteboardy and all bow down to the whiteboard of truth. Right, so these are the figures. Let me just walk you through this briefly to uh, tell you what each of it means. The yearly consumption of the heat pump, 3,276. The yearly consumption in gas, of course, 14,234 kilowatt hours for the on-demand gas boiler. That, the 200 kilowatt hours, is because the gas boiler, of course, requires electricity to run. This is something that comes up an awful lot. What you're gonna do in the event of a power cut and the answer is exactly the same as what we did when we had a gas boiler. We couldn't heat our house because you need electric to run a gas boiler. The pence per kilowatt hour on today's price cap, so we've just entered January, is 24.9 pence per kilowatt hour, apparently according to Ofgem, for electric and for gas it's 6.34 pence per kilowatt hour. The standing charge, again on the price cap, 61 pence per day. I mean, you could probably get cheaper than this, I should point out, but the, I'll, I'll play it safe and use the price cap because that's the worst case scenario. Uh, and the uh, standing charge is 31.7 pence per day for gas. That's risen an awful lot. This here is how much it's cost us in this house with solar, with the home battery system. So this is with no solar and no battery. This is essentially a straight swap from the gas on-demand boiler we had to the heat pump. So it's, 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 there's, there's no help, there's no time of day tariff, no solar, no battery. So in terms of the pure efficiency, forget the running costs, the pure efficiency, you can see there is a massive advantage to a heat pump. This is why people and governments alike have got such a, such a hard on, if you will, for a heat pump. Look at the energy consumption or reduction of that. Imagine if a good portion of the country, because not everyone can get a heat pump, I'm not, pretending they can. Look at the reduction in imported energy or however it's it's obtained for that country. It's massively reduced. Now the price is obviously still a lot cheaper for gas so that's advantage gas at the moment it's just far less efficient. Standing charge again cheaper so the total costs this is done quite simply 6.34 pence per kilowatt hour times that. I've added 50 quid on for electricity costs for the year for a boiler, which is at the low end, it's two to 400 kilowatt hours apparently on average. Uh, standing charge obviously is just that times 365. Same with that for the electric and that's exactly the same as well because we're on a flat rate tariff, 24.9 pence times 3,276. So the cost, pure running cost, including standing charge, for the heat pump is £1,039 and for the gas on demand boiler for the consumption, the standing charge and the little bit of electric which is about 50 quid, £1,068. So it's near as damn it exactly the same. There's a bit in it but not enough to really shout about. I anticipate this will go up at a quicker rate than this in terms of the gas price will go up quicker than electricity political will aside, who knows where we're going, but ultimately you, there's no real advantage there for getting a heat pump over a gas on demand boiler 
if that's it. So you're on the worst case tariff. You've got no solar, no battery, no help at all. You're not really doing anything other than swapping it around. Now that's not something that everybody's bothered about. Some people just want to reduce their total consumption. Whether it's in gas or electricity, the energy consumption is obviously lower. But this is something that comes up more than anything else when it comes to heat pumps. When will it pay for itself? No one ever asks that question when they get a new gas boiler. Well, I'm getting a new gas boiler, when's it gonna pay for itself? I'm getting a new kitchen, when's that gonna pay for itself? I'm getting a new car, you get my point. But with a heat pump, you have to justify it financially. So looking at this, you're gonna be no worse off, but you're gonna be no better off either. Given the fact that the heat pump is gonna be more to install, not for everybody. Some people post grant are actually paying less than a gas boiler replacement would cost, but that's, that's probably more of a small house niche use case. Um, it, it, financially, I cannot justify that. Now, let's get to this bit here. This is our house. How much it's costing us with our solar panels, with our home battery system, with our time of day tariff. So if you're unaware, even in winter, we charge our batteries up at night at the cheap rate. At the moment, that's seven pence per kilo hour. And then the batteries power the house and the heat pump for as long as they can throughout the day. So our electricity is either free from solar panels or almost completely from the cheap window at night. So it's either free or very, very cheap compared to the standard price cap. The reason why this is lower, 2,800 kilowatt hours for the yearly consumption of the heat pump with us, versus that is because that is how much the heat pump has consumed. That doesn't tell me what I need to know in terms of the cost to me, because a portion of this will have come from the solar panels, where it's, well, it's, it's zero cost. So I want to know, or all I want to know for this is how much I am consuming from the grid, and therefore I can work the cost out from that. So that's been reduced because the middle kind of four, five, maybe six months of the year, possibly even longer actually, the solar panels are powering the house and the heat pump exclusively. It's completely from the solar panels. There's enough sun to do that. We're not even touching the grid and therefore the total consumption that's costing us to import is lower than that one. And in reality, again, I'm, I'm really being safe on this one. That's probably two and a half thousand kilowatt hours. I've put it at two eight, so I can't be accused of being biased towards a heat pump or something because I work for heat pump manufacturers and they're paying me, I'm a shill. If any heat pump manufacturers are wanting to sponsor a channel, get in touch. I'd rather get paid for what I'm being accused of than not. Anyway, so pence per kilowatt hour from the grid. My average over the last 12 months, in fact, no, over the last two years, has been 8.1 pence per kilowatt hour. Because sometimes, even though we're paying seven pence at night, we do dip into the peak time grid. It's not often, but in winter, if it's really, really cold, the batteries are depleted before they charge back up again at night. So therefore we do occasionally dip into it. So our average price, according to my bill, is 8.1 pence per kilowatt hour. So that's 8.1 times 2,800. The standard charge is exactly the same, of course, and that comes to 334 pounds after I have reduced the standing charge of the gas. That's about 100, and, well, it's just over 100 pounds a year. It's about 110 pounds a year that we pay purely for standing charge for gas but we don't use gas, so we don't need the gas standing charge. We don't need a gas connection, so that's over £100 saving before we've even started looking at the heat pump. So once we've knocked off that 100 quid, then that's the total cost of the heat pump for this house with the solar, with the battery, and it comes to £334 a year, which means we are saving compared to what we had before our gas central heating boiler was £1,068 at today's prices. We're saving £764 a year. Obviously, a gas central heating boiler requires gas and electric, whereas a heat pump just requires electric. Now, a lot of people see that as, as a downside. What if you don't have any electricity? Well, again, as I said before, the same as a gas boiler. A gas boiler requires electricity. It requires gas. So that's two single points of failure, whereas a heat pump only has one. The install costs, this is obviously another big one. How much extra did it cost us to get the heat pump installed compared to 
a new gas central heating boiler because we needed a new heating system. We had to replace our on-demand boiler with something else. The cost of the heat pump on top of what the gas central heating boiler would have cost us for a new one from the same company at today's rates. So this isn't what we paid, this is what I would have to pay today. I've asked a company and they said it would be £3,300 extra post grant to get the heat pump installed on top of what it would have cost for the gas central heating boiler. So we're effectively spending £3,300 more than we would have done had we just got another one of these. Saving £764 per year, which means after 4.3 years, the heat pump has essentially, if you will, paid for itself. And that's only likely to rise, of course. So I would say four years, let, let, let's, let's say four years in total. The lifespan of a heat pump is, as I'm told from installers and the manufacturers, is about the same as a gas central heating boiler, if maintained properly, of course. You're looking at 10 to 15 years, apparently. We've just got it recently serviced, and based on last year's cost as well, you're looking at roughly £40 a year extra to get the heat pump serviced compared to the gas central heating boiler serviced. So, okay, that's another 40 quid, I guess we should add on to that. 74 which affects that of course, £124. So let's call that 4.6 years. Again, I expect that to actually be higher because I've played it safe on all these figures. That will be lower in reality. That was probably going to be a little bit lower. And my usage, my consumption, should I say, of the heat pump has gone down each year I've had it. So I've only had it a few years now, but I'm tweaking the system. I'm making it slightly more uh, cost effective to run. So again, that, that should in theory go up. So four and a half years, including service costs, including everything for this house. What happens next? Typically in the comment section is, well, how much does the solar and battery cost? That's gotta be added to it. And yeah, I guess for this you do. You're probably gonna be look on, uh, looking on top of that 3,300 about another 13, 14,000 pounds. So let's call that 17 grand ish 17 grand ish for all three that is not the saving of all three that's just how much the heat pump added to the other two saves on top of what they already save solar panels save more than that the home battery definitely saves more than that and collectively although this is done in another video in my channel how much the whole house cost and um, so i encourage you to watch that if you want more detail we're probably saving about 1,900 quid a year now um, by having all three. And we're spending, what, 17-ish grand. So you're looking, uh, I reckon, because prices go up, about nine-ish year payback period. It will vary eight to nine years for all three. And this is something I say quite often. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Solar, battery, time of day tariff, heat pump. The more pieces you have, the more sense it makes. So individually, they can save you a bit of money, but collectively, they can save you an awful lot of money. And I don't just look at this as a justification for spending money. As I said earlier, you don't do that for anything else, do you? I've just bought, I don't know, a new gaming monitor or a new laptop or some furniture. You don't look at when it's gonna pay itself back. You just think, I want that, and this is how much it cost. But financially, this, I guess, has to make sense for a lot of people. Otherwise, why do it? It's not just an environmental thing in terms of reducing your consumption. You need other reasons, and financial reasons are, are the big one, of course. This, for me, is something that now, look at that, 374 quid a year for our entire utility bill for a five-bedroom house, excluding water, of course. That, for me, is a protection. If something happens to me or my wife, our jobs, something like that, and this has happened to someone in my family recently that's also been in the channel, you get ill, you can't work, and all of a sudden, you, you know, financially, it punches you in the stomach. That means that this is, house is as cheap to run as I could possibly get it. There are a few other little tweaks, I suppose, but essentially, that for a five-bed house is an utter bargain. Yeah, you'd have probably been better... I don't know what people say all the time, investing in Tesla 10 years ago. You'd have been a millionaire by now. <laughs> Maybe I would, but this for me is a better thing. Not just because I can get content from it, it's because I've now got 
that amount of saving each year and I can put that towards fun things. I've done the important stuff for the house. I've protected us against massive uh, increase of costs. So when the energy crisis happened and prices went massively high, I mean, what was electric? I did that peak at nearly 50 pence. That was at like 11 pence for gas. We didn't, we, we barely noticed the increase because it was so small already. It was hardly enough of an increase to even notice. That's partly why I've got all these things, the solar, the battery, the heat pump, because that's the protection that we've now got against rising costs, against if we lose our job, if we, something happens to one of us. But I am under no illusion. As I said earlier, not everybody can get a heat pump. Not everybody can get solar. Not everybody, but a lot of people can get a home battery system. Not on about the cost now, on about physically putting it in a property. It's not a silver bullet. It's not a solution for everybody. Just because the government are pushing something, it doesn't mean you have to get one. There's a multitude of other electric options. You've got electric heaters, you've got storage heaters, you've got um, infrared heaters. You know, there are other electrification options that you can replace a gas boiler with. You don't have to get a heat pump. And to be honest, if we didn't have any of these, would I have gone for a heat pump? No, probably not like electric vehicles, like mobile phones. They start out expensive and they get cheaper and cheaper as more people get them, as, as production ramps up, as economies of scales kick in. So I anticipate that the, you know, this, the install cost will just go down over time. At the moment, they're prohibitive for a lot of people, but like home batteries, like again, electric vehicles, they're pretty much at price parity now with a combustion engine car. In fact, Vauxhall have just brought one out where the electric version and the petrol diesel version is exactly the same price. We're pretty much there. They are doing that. And I, I, I hope, it's not guaranteed, but I'm pretty certain that heat pumps will only come down in price as they get more and more common and more and more manufacturers are churning them out. And that's even without any grants. So that's it, that's us, we are done. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, if you are thinking about getting a heat pump, then this will help you out. Whether you've got solar or battery or not, that obviously changes things considerably. That's it. It's minus three outside right now and still warm because heat pumps don't work in winter, do they? Just tell the Scandinavian countries that. All the usual stuff I look forward to seeing in the comments section that I get on every single heat pump video. So as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe. The members, 99p a month for videos on Sunday instead of Friday and some members only videos as well. What a bargain. I mean, that's better than, uh, than, than, than any of this, I suppose, in terms of value. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Have a good new new uh, 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 Have a good new year. I'm not even gonna bother editing now. I can't be bothered.